hopefully here's how we got to this point. So the whole problem I'm having right now is this bulb, really the wiring itself was messed up from factory on this thing. Okay. Oh, I mean, yeah, you can tell YouTube too how messed up it is. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. It's dude. okay. That's my buddy Ryan, by the way. This is who, this is the mastermind behind everything. He has all the tools. He has all the knowledge. If it wasn't for him, this wouldn't be happening. For sure. So something like this, bro? Something like that. Ooh, that's a little sneak peek. Ooh, yeah. See, we're just not putting this together. You guys are seeing what it looks like afterwards. But the whole issue behind this is this wiring system. This was messed up from factory. I never had a high or low. This was just on off. I should have took that as a warning sign, but basically this thing blows bulbs back to back, back to back to back. So we're running a DC setup to an LED bar in the front. What we're doing here is cutting a hole directly in this headlight that goes into the housing because I'm not going to use this anymore. This is going to be junk. I'm not even going to use any of the wiring from this. We are connecting a current straight from the battery to a fuse, to a switch, to this headlight. And that's what I got here. We got the, uh, it's a 12 volt battery. Uh, I don't know how many amps it puts out, but not too many. The light is a, it draws 1.2 amps. So not many, but I got a 10 amp fuse here with the fuses themselves. Got the switch here. So it's gonna go battery cause I got a new battery as well. What kind we got? We got a, I already know what it is. 12 volt, six amp battery. It's a lot bigger than the stock one. Look, you can see that little baby back there. Little baby one. So this will be a lot better too. So we're going battery, fuse, switch, headlight. But we got to get this mounted first. Right here. We got it fixed in position. It is where it is at. There is some gaps under here that I'm gonna fill with uh, liquid rubber and then I'm gonna paint over it, to, you know, clear the little spaces in between here. But it's right in the center. Next step, let's go. All right, so now we gotta cut a hole in this plastic fairing here by the speedometer to mount this switch right there. Pretty simple, let's get her done. Change of plan. So it does not mount up right here in the side by your toggle switch because the handlebars get in the way. Yes. So to negate that, I didn't want to, but it's, it's functional. We're gonna mount it right in the middle right here and it gives it enough clearance in the back, back here with all these wires and junk for the switch to come out and the wires to come out and go down because this handlebar gets in the way if you were to do it up here. So if that helps you out any, if you're doing this, I doubt it, know that. All right, so she's buttoned up and she looks good, but there's a small problem I have. So this flicks on, light comes on, great, that's awesome. Fantastic, but here was my mistake. Yep, I plugged the turn signal into the fog light signal backwards. So now this thing just turns on and stays on by itself. But <laughs> when I hit this to turn right, see, it's turning right. The wrong one fucking flashes, man. So I gotta swap those around, but all together, it's, it's, ah, I'm a little disappointed, you know, but it looks good, but I just need to clean it up a lot. That's the problem because now we pointed it as far down as possible. <coughs> the guy sneezes, it happens. As we could, like we pointed it as far down as we could mount it, but it's still freaking, uh, points way out to the trees. Like it doesn't point out directly in front of your bike. So what I'm gonna do is get a shield and I'm gonna get a shield that goes over it that's gonna point it down like this so you can see where you're going, you know? 
But so I gotta flip these wires around. All right, so I got the turn signals flipped around to the proper position now. Let's turn her on. Fog light comes on. Left turn signal, left turn signal. That was backwards, <laughs> that's my fault. Right turn signal, turn signal, bam. But most important of anything, bam. Look at that. It's still, like I said, pointed upwards too far. So I gotta get a shield to go down. But everything functions, everything's good, on, off. And because this is now a DC current, so your bike is switched off, key out the ignition, there's no power to it, right? Boom, you can still turn on your light because it runs directly off the power. So that's a benefit too. But this looks good, man. Looks good. Got her halfway dialed up, so you'll see it when I finish it. But this thing uh, turned out good. Well, got her about 75% uh, done. I say 75 because I still have to make this housing, but check it out for yourself. So what I did here is there was a big gap underneath this. This was all just an empty space. Like how there's a little space up top here. There's a big empty space down here from where we had to mount this thing. We had to twist the headlight backwards in order to get it as far pointed down as possible. But uh, all I did was seal it with a bunch of uh, rubber sealant it comes in like a little squeeze tube and i filled it all up here and i put a little bit on the edges here here and here and then i taped off the headlight and i painted it so uh is it absolutely beautiful yes <laughs> is it perfect no but uh it's good dude it looks it looks really good as a complete package it definitely changed the profile i think it looks good but it functions well, of course, too. So I still got to make that housing. And I decided to end it off here because it's fine. You know, it works. It's mostly together. And I'm going to have to make that another project itself. And to explain one more time, just a metal piece to go down and point towards the road. And a metal piece on the side to connect to the top right here. So it just angles it this way. But as of now, it works. I've been using it for the past like three, four days. And uh, it's beautiful, man. It looks really good. This thing looks like modern. The switch itself looks really good too. It's really bright outside right now, so I'm trying to get the light right, but you can't even see it. That was the whole point. I blended it in because I painted the top of it black and I even made it like a rough texture, like the background of this. And uh, you can't even see it. Here's the switch. It's so, it's so stealthy. So yeah, I, I mounted it right there. And it uh, looks good that way. Also, I got the camshaft. This is the uh, A9 high lift camshaft. I ordered it about three weeks ago. It finally came. Here she is. Nice, still greasy, brand new. So I'm gonna slap this bad girl in here. But I have the valve springs, the 2000 pound valve springs and the high lift rocker arms that go on top of this to equal a built top end. Um, I'm also gonna do transmission stuff, just a few different things in the tranny, just to equal up to supporting a built top end in the motor. So that's why I haven't done too much with this moped stuff in the past like month or so, because I'm building everything at once. I'm collecting all the parts, the camshaft, the valve springs, the high lift rocker arms, the contra spring, the Kevlar belt, and the lighter rollers. So those six or seven things together will equal what I want. But uh, I have a second camshaft too. When I ordered the first one, it didn't come in time. So I just complained and they sent me that. The first one came and then the second one came. So I got two for one. So I got this A9 high lift camshaft just sitting around brand new. Maybe I'll do something with that. I don't know. So the total cost of this project is about $70. Uh, the light itself, which I got at Harbor Freight, was 35 and then the battery, which was 40 and then the wires, which a buddy of had for free, switch and fuse. But those things together will get it done. So, you know, about $80, 80 or $90, you can have yourself an LED light bar. It is worth it, yeah. 
over to stock headlight, it's a clear, big, huge difference. You can see the moon now, you know? I have to be observant of my neighbor's houses when I'm turning this on because it's that bright. So it's definitely worth it. It makes a big difference. Uh, time consuming, it's really time consuming. Not even like doing the wiring. The wiring is the easy part. Mounting everything where you want it to go and look how you envision it, that's the part that takes a while. So that'll take a minute or two to figure out, but it's not that bad. Overall, I'm happy with it. I'm not gonna get rid of it. It looks good too. It adds a whole nother look to the bike, depending on how you do it. But definitely, fun project, I'm glad to do it. This thing is gonna get some huge upgrades coming up soon. I wanna be honest in about a month or so, but that's gonna be good. So this is gonna be a fully built bike. It's already turning into one. I mean, it's it's looking good already. But uh, thanks for watching, man. I hope you had some insight on this. You can do this yourself. It just takes some time, you know, but uh, it's fun, good stuff. So you'll see more of this bike. Until next time, man.